This is our first lesson in the miracles of Jesus. I, I believe it's going to be most exciting. And I just urge uh, all of us to not, not just take in the Word, but the Spirit. And uh, it's easy to talk about something, and it will be something that you don't have. We would, we would prefer you not only just uh, listening to it, but getting it on the inside, you know, get, get something inside of us uh, that we can see miracles, that we can experience miracles, that we can be blessed with, with miracles. Uh, on your page five, we are beginning our study with Jesus and his miracle power. And we're going to use it as a very broad theme, and we're hoping that it will give us tremendous teaching on just what Jesus did in the area of miracles. In the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 32, it says, Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these works do you stone me? If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. And many resorted unto him, and said, John did no miracle, but all these, all things that John spoke of this man were true, and many believed on him there. Our first question related to miracles in the Lord Jesus Christ would be, why did Jesus do miracles? Now, a miracle is that which is beyond your, your human activity. Uh, if you can do it normally and naturally, you don't call that a miracle. Now, an animal might call that a miracle, you know, a dog might call it a miracle, or a cow might call it a miracle, but you don't call it a miracle if you can do it naturally. So when we speak of miracles, we speak of that above and beyond our normal and natural operations. And, and that's what we call a miracle. Why did Jesus do miracles? Jesus taught spiritual lessons through his miracles. I wouldn't want to say that was the number one reason, but we'll get to other reasons of it. But wh when he helped Peter bring in a miraculous catch of fish, he also taught the disciples about the successes they would have as fishers of men. So he was doing a dual thing. He was not showing them only the miracle of the catch, but he was showing them the miracle of catching men for God because he told them to go and to be fishers of men. In Luke chapter 5 verse 4 it says, And when he had left speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drop. Simon answering said, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing, but are nevertheless at your word I will let down the net. And when he had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes in their nets. And, and they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships. That was the miracle. So that they began to sink. Now, now, if you're a fisherman, get too many fish, it's very interesting. It'd be very hard for a fisherman to get too many fish. And when, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, I am a sinful man. For he was astonished and all that were with him, as it draught the fishes which they had taken. And so was also uh, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto them, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Now that's the double thing. He not only gave them plenty of money in their pocket that day, by two boatloads of fish, but he said, I want you to know that as you caught fish supernaturally, you're going to catch men supernaturally. And when they brought their ships to land, they forsook all, and they followed Jesus. And so the purpose and a miracle in that point of view was to bring a spiritual application and that they would know that they were no longer going to catch fish, they were going to catch human beings. So it had a, a two-point uh, feature there. Also, uh, miracles produced discipleship. Uh, your point number two, when he healed the centurion's servant, he also showed the Jews that the Gentiles may have more faith than the religious Jews. Now, this miracle that he, that he did that we're going to read about in Genesis chapter 8 
on the centurion's servant, he was revealing to them that, that, that heaven, heaven has no priorities and, and that anybody can get heaven's blessings. Now, the Jews didn't understand this at all. They thought they had a corner on all of heaven's blessings and, and that only Jews could get these blessings and not, not anyone else. And so here Jesus broke their routine and, and showed them something new. And Matthew 8 and 5, And when Jesus entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, saying, Lord, my servant lieth home sick of the, of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. Speak the word only, and my servant uh, shall be healed. This was a military post, and he very likely was the officer in charge, and no doubt lived in the biggest house in the whole community. But he yet said, I'm not worthy if you even come on the roof of my house. He says, if you'll just speak the word, then I know that my servant will be healed. I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go, he goeth, another come, he cometh. To my servant do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said to them that followed him, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. See, Jesus might come to town here and find more faith down on Michigan Street than he finds in the churches. And he would, he would, he would, he would, it would cause everybody to be amazed. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east to the west, and they shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, now you see, he showed you that people that are like your kids brought up in church, uh, if, if they don't serve God faithfully, uh, they, won't, they won't get in on this at all. They, 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 in order for them to get in on this, they got to personally experience Jesus for themselves. You know, they, they, they have to. And it's the same with you. You know, some of you were, are, are children of very wonderful parents that love God, but it's your experience that counts for yourself. You thank God, you know, for the experience of your parents, but it's your personal experience that means a lot to you. And God wants you to have those good experiences. Can you say amen? All right. Now, I'm giving you purposes for which Jesus healed. Now, I wouldn't say they're primary purposes, but they're only purposes that we can see. In this miracle, he was showing everybody that he had not come to bless Jews. He had come to bless humanity. God loved the world and gave his son. He didn't love any certain tribe of people. Also, when Jesus healed the man with a withered hand, uh, he taught the observers concerning the errors about the Sabbath. So not, not only here was he dealing with the healing, he was dealing with the doctrine at the same time, showing you purposes why Jesus healed. In Matthew 12 and 10, there was a man which, which had a hand withered, and he asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day that they might accuse him? And he said to them, What man? Shall there be among you that one of his sheep, if he fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold and take him out? How much more is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then saith he to the man, stretch forth thy hand. He stretched it forth, and it was restored whole, just like the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. Now you have the same you know, situations in the world today. There are people that want you to keep a, a letter, like, like people that say, if you don't worship on, on a Saturday, you're not worshiping when God wants you to worship. You, you see, they would rather you keep a tradition than they would to keep Jesus. So these people saw a miracle, went right out and had a council. How can we kill him? <laughs> Let, let's kill him. Miracles doesn't bring you friends, oftentimes. It brings you enemies because they hate, they hate the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this miracle was done to break down the idea that, that Sabbath is more important than a man, that a ritual is more important than a man. You don't get to heaven with rituals. You get to heaven because Jesus is in your heart. You can keep all the rituals that mankind ever, ever, ever had, and if you don't have Jesus in your heart, you're not going to make it. And so the purpose of miracles becomes clearer and clearer as we see why Jesus did certain miracles. Now, in your point B here, uh, Jesus proved himself to be the Son of God uh, through his miracles. In his, in his first sermon, Jesus declared himself to be the anointed of God through his miracles. In Luke 4, 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He hath anointed me to preach the gospel. Now, now he, he quoted this right in his own hometown and right in the church in town. 
their, their synagogue in, in, that, in that city. Hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And so in his very first sermon, he declared himself to be the anointed of God and the, the, and the producer of miracles. So that was a purpose for them. And your point number two there, his fame was spread through his miracle ministry. That's in Mark 1, 23. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And the man cried out, saying, Leave me alone. What have I to do with you? Jesus of Nazareth, are you come to destroy me? I know you, who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold your peace and come out of the man. And when the unclean spirit had torn him, he cried with a loud voice and came out of him. And all were amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, uh, What new doctrine is this? For, for with authority he commandeth even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And immediately his fame spread throughout the whole region around about Galilee. And so that miracle told the story of his presence as the Lord and the Savior for the whole people of the whole area, uh, that they might know that he was the Son of God, that he was the Savior of the world. Then, in your point number three at the top of page eight, Jesus proved his identity to John the Baptist by miracles. John the Baptist was the proclaimer, the forerunner of, 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 his minister, of the ministry of Jesus on this earth. And in Matthew 11 and 2, it says, Now when John had heard of the, in the prison of the works of Jesus, he sent two disciples and said, are, are you he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go tell John these things which you hear and see. The blind receive the sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached unto them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And so uh, John wanted to know if he was a, really the one, really truly the one that he had baptized. He was in jail now. If he was the one that the voice had come from heaven, for it says, go and, go and ask him. And, and rather than saying, yes, I am he, he said, go and tell him all these things, the blind, the blind are seen, the lame are walking, the lepers are cleansed, the dead are raised, and then he'll know by the miracles that I do who I am. And so in this case, Jesus did miracles in order to reveal himself and his, and his identity. And number four, the miracles were an identification of God's presence with Jesus. As in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, you see, and with power, two things, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So the miracles in Jesus' life was his identif identification with the Father, that you couldn't miss knowing he was sent of the Father because of the miracles that he performed. And so the miracles of Jesus, as you are beginning to see now, were for a multitude of reasons. And, and many of them were not precisely just to see that person made well. They weren't precisely just to see that person made better. Uh, they, they had many, many things behind them that his miracles were revealing, you know, great truth un, unto the people. Your number five, the, the healing of the man born blind proved that Jesus was from God. That's in John chapter 9, verses 24 through 33. And so this healing was just to prove to the people that Jesus Christ was from God to the unbelievers standing around. They were standing around. You can read that scripture yourself a little later. You see on, on page 9, Jesus showed his compassion through his miracles. I think that's very beautiful. He opened up his insides. He showed how he loved, how he loved humanity. Mark 1, 40 says, And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, kneeling down to him, saying to him, If you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion on the leper. Move. They weren't even supposed to touch lepers. Move with compassion. Put forth his hand and touched him and said, I will be clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from the man, and he was cleansed. And so there's another purpose. And another reason why Jesus healed, he showed his compassion and his love for humanity as he was doing so. 
Through miracles, Jesus proved that the kingdom of God was triumphing over the kingdom of Satan. That's a great one, isn't it? And it was through miracles that he showed that the kingdom of God was stronger than the devil. And it's the same today. If we want to show the world who we are, we're going to have to get into, into the world of miracles. A dead church doesn't influence anybody. And dead, dead theology, it doesn't influence anybody. What influences people is the power of the Most High God. That when the power of God is, is shown and the power of God is revealed, then, then you're going to have miracles. You're going to have miracles, you see. And, and then miracles will change people's minds. In many cases, multitudes of people are saved when they see a miracle. And, and we're believing God in this nation that there should be miracles in high places that will cause many millions of Americans to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Now, your deep point there... Uh, through miracles, Jesus proved that the kingdom of God, now notice the different reasons, the kingdom of God was triumphing over the kingdom of Satan. Then your E, through his miracles, Jesus proved that he accepted the outcast of human society. Uh, that, is, that is very beautiful, that you couldn't get so low. We have so many hurt people in our world today. We have, we have so many people today that, that feel like they're not wanted and not cared for. That, that through the miracles of God, we can teach these people they're loved and they are desired and they are necessary and that they belong to part of us. They're not outcasts and outcasts. We've got to get that thing out of people's minds that they don't amount to anything, that they don't mean anything. That's one human person, whether it's in India or Africa or Tibet or this area here, one person is worth the whole world. We've got to keep saying it. You know, we've got to keep saying it. We've just got to let people know that we believe in the dignity of the human person and the immortality of a human person, that they're going to live forever and they are important. And all the people said, all right. And number two on page 10, how did Jesus perform these miracles? Now, we kind of concluded the, the why he did them and the many reasons why he did them. And there might be more if you will penetrate and study the New Testament there. But the, in the second instance, how did he do it? In, in Matthew 9 and, and, and 28, and when he was coming to the house, the blind, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? Now he's trying to show you here that miracles come by trust and by faith. Now the blind men had never seen him, had never seen anybody else. But Jesus said, now, do you believe that I'm able to do this? They said, yes, Lord. <laughs> you know something? Not maybe, not hope so. Yes, Lord. And then touched ye their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. You ought to underline that, that, that sentence there. It, then he said, according to your faith, be it unto you. I wish the time would come when there wouldn't be one single person in our whole congregation that needed healing. That you could send them to let all the sick come forward and they'd all start clapping their hands and shouting and praising God. We've already got it. And, and, and coming to the front is not a ritual that one has to do every Sunday. Are you here? No, it's, it's not a ritual. Uh, we would like you to have eternal health. From here to glory, you'd feel great and feel good and feel wonderful. Can you say amen? All right. And their eyes were open and Jesus straightway charged them saying, uh, Tell no man about it. That, that's because all they do is get persecuted. And then again in Matthew 9, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood for 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, if, if I may but touch his garment, I shall, say shall. You see, she'd already made that thing up in her heart that, that this was what was going to happen. And so... He does these miracles by your faith, by your faith. You say to the preacher, why don't you heal me? Well, it's your faith, not his faith. It's your faith. And when you connect your faith with his life, it works. When you connect your faith with his spirit, it works. Whether you're in a cornfield or whether you're in a church house. You can get healed anywhere in the world without anybody being there when your faith connects with his power. And all the people said, yeah. that is so true. You'll be there. Jesus operated in love, Mark 140, and there came a leper to him, as we read you, beseeching him, that he would make him clean. 
Uh, he was showing here how he loved the unlovable because nobody could touch a leper and, and still appear in society. It was so contagious a disease. And he was showing him and showing those. He says he put forth his hand, put forth his hand. He wasn't supposed to touch him. And he touched him, did it anyway. And he was made clean. Now, in your C point there, uh, Jesus, Jesus healed people by an operation of prayer. In John eleven forty one. then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And that's what you're going to have to say when, you're, when you want something. You're going to have to look up and say, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you hear me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that you are in me, that you sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice. Now, if you want to know why I cry with a loud voice, I'm trying to be like Jesus. Everybody present or not? Yeah. So often people say, well, you don't have to do it so loud, do you? Jesus did. He cried with a loud voice and said, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead uh, came forth, uh, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin to keep him from suffocating. Jesus said, hurry, fellows. And Jesus said unto them, loose him and, and let him go. And, and so by prayer, the miracles took place, by faith and then by prayer. And another reason you find in D here, John 5, 19, then answered Jesus and said unto them, verily I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. I think you'd be well to read scriptures like that time and, and time again, because we're working under the same authority that Jesus is working under. His Father is our Father, our Heavenly Father. And, and Jesus said, I want to coordinate my total living on this earth with the desires and the wishes and the will of my Father who sent me. I, I want all that I am, you know, to, to, be, to be related to what all He wants me to be. So he was showing here, here that, uh, that he wanted them to, to, to receive healing under the, under the direction of somebody. Very often when we speak to someone that's real sick, I say, we come in Jesus' name. And the Father says, if you ask anything in Jesus' name, he will give it. So we are using the Father and the Son to, to, uh, and anointed to the Holy Spirit at the same time. He operated under the direction from the Father. He operated by the Spirit of God. That's your E point there. And Matthew 12, it's uh, verse 26. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And so he, he is showing you there that only by the Spirit of God can these things be, that you're not doing it by the devil's power or, or a human power, but by a very special power. Then you have Luke 4, 18 again. And your point number three, Jesus did not perform miracles for himself. Now, or for his benefit, or for his enrichment. Jesus never made anything off of his miracles. If we could just teach humans that today, it would be a tremendous thing. When Satan tempted Jesus to miraculously provide food for himself, he refused. That's in Matthew 4. And he says, I don't know, I won't produce bread for myself. But, but he produced bread for the hungry. He multiplied bread for the hungry, but he would not, when he was hungry, uh, he would not provide bread for himself. And you'll be there on, on page 12. Jesus did miraculously provide food for 5,000, and that was up at the north end of the Sea of Galilee, and for 4,000, and that was at the south end of the Sea of Galilee. And these were the ones that the demoniac brought together himself. When Jesus said, go tell your friends, he went wild with it. He had 4,000 men, and it says, plus all the women and the children. And if you've got 4,000 men, how many women you got? You got at least 6,000. And, and, and so now you got 10,000. And, and the least they would have uh, would be two kids. And, and so you got 20,000 people all eating there because the demoniac got healed, went and told everybody about it and said, come on out in the desert here where we can get to him. And everybody, everybody received of it. And, and so you, you have the amazing situation uh, we, with the two scriptures, Matthew 14 and, and then again Matthew 15. 
And it, and it says very clearly, besides the women and the children. So we find there are multiple purposes. I, I think maybe even today, there are multiple purposes. When God healed you, it's just not you. God told me in the Philippines, because so many people were so elated about the healing of that girl, uh, until that's all they wanted to talk about. At the end of the year, they said in their, in their big end of the year magazines that two great things happened that year, that Clarita Villanueva was healed and, and Meg Sexai became president. And, and, and so they, they placed it very highly. But God spoke to me and said, I did not heal her for you or for her, but for my kingdom. And I said, thank you, Lord. And so millions of people have been saved since that time. So he did it for the kingdom. The purpose was the kingdom.